This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news the global service sector is expanding faster and keeping the long-awaited economic retreat at bay. First in the US, there were two PMIs out for the services sector. The widely watched ISM one retreated from a modest expansion to a minor expansion in May. This wasn't expected because a faster expansion was anticipated. However, new order growth was notably strong. The internationally benchmark market one rose to a moderate expansion, but not by as much as was anticipated. New order growth was a feature of this one too. Markets took their cues from the ISM one. But there was little growth in US factory orders in April. They did grow from March, but it was modest. But from a year ago, they fell 1.1%. Given inflation in that period, that is a substantial retreat. And this is reflected in American May vehicle sales, which were a bit of a disappointment. They ran at about a 15 million annual rate and well down on a 16.1 million annual rate in April. Over the weekend, not only did the US Congress approve the debt limit compromise and their president sign it, their labour markets showed much more strength than expected in May. At a headline level, the US economy created 339,000 new jobs in May, compared to a market expectation of just 190,000, and following an upwardly revised 294,000 in April. Job gains occurred across the board in professional and business services, government, health care, construction, transportation and warehousing, and social assistance. Across the Pacific, China's services PMI expanded at a good pace in May, according to the Kaijin survey, and faster than the official version. And Japan's services sector is expanding even faster now, and at a record pace since the survey began in 2008. India's service sector is expanding faster as well. There has been a slower but historically strong expansion of new business in May, but this survey reveals inflation is now at its joint highest since July 2017. In Australia, consumer inflation expectations rose to 5% in May from 4.6% in April, reinforcing the view that inflation is far from beaten there. And staying in Australia, home loan approvals fell a surprise 2.9% in April when a solid 2% rise was expected. This follows a strong 5.3% gain in March. Some analysts blame the timing of Easter, but that was hardly unexpected. More likely, it is an overall reflection of the state of the new house building market. The supply of new homes is set to continue to decline under the weight of rising interest rates designed to rein in inflation. They have a lot of work to do on that front. Meanwhile, their official pay review body raised pay rates for their lowest paid workers by 8.65% and workers under their award system will get 5.75% effective July 1. It will apply to about a fifth of the Australian workforce. Data out Monday shows wages and salaries rose at a fast 11.4% year on year. That probably means the RBA will raise rates again soon. Inflation was running at 6.8% in April. And the record-breaking grain production in Australia is now expected to come to an end as favourable weather conditions fade. In fact, the volume reductions will be quite sharp and may affect global food prices. The US Treasury 10-year yield will start today at 3.69% and little change from Saturday. And the price of gold will start today at $1,961 an ounce and up $10 from Saturday. And oil prices are up a dollar today from Saturday at just on $72.50 a barrel in the US, while the international bread price is just on $77 a barrel. The Saudi announcement that they will be cutting supply for longer to try and raise the price has only had a minimal effect. Cheap Russian oil flooding many markets undermines them. And the Kiwi dollar will start today at little change at 60.8 US cents. Against the Aussie, we're still at 91.8 Australian cents. Against the euro, we're a little change to 56.7 euro cents. That means the trade weight in index is down 20 basis points to 60.3 from where we left it on Saturday. And the Bitcoin price is sharply lower today at $25,759, which is down a full 5% from this time yesterday. Volatility of the past 24 hours has been higher, just on plus or minus 3.8%. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has filed charges against Binance, accusing it of a giant web of deception. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. 
Hear more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. 